Hey team, it is day seven in the 90 day challenge. Hope you're doing well. Just wanted to jump into our six goals for the day real quick, see how you're all doing, uh, tracking along. And then secondly, wanna talk a little bit about the water consumption. Uh, some people asked like, Richard, how are you drinking that much water? Like, how do you do it? So I got a few tips for you there. And then lastly, we're gonna go through an example full body workout day. I did get one question from yesterday's workout on like, you know, what do you do? Uh, so for those that are beginners or just didn't really understand what I was talking about fully in the full body workout, uh, let's uh, go through that a little bit. So we'll start with our six goals first to see how we ended up yesterday. And I just am happy to say, we're not gonna need the red marker, so I'm gonna throw that down. That, well, actually all the way down. That feels good um, to not miss and get all six pieces of the goals that I want. Obviously, focusing on the trifecta, calories, water, and sleep, making sure that we get those three, but down to 227. So uh, it was 226.7. Um, it's, it's nice to get that, right? But I do know reality. I'm, I'm trying to be pragmatic uh, in that, you know, you. Uh, my grandpa used to say, you know, a horse that craps fast don't crap very long. It's one of those things that you got to keep going with this. Uh, you got to make sure that um, you continue to hit your goals day in and day out. And what you're going to find is a fast start. It'll slow up a little bit, but it'll gradually continue to go for you. So um, 227 feels good to be down that five pounds, but I know it's a difference of water and the fact that I changed my eating habits. I really wasn't watching before and things like that. So, happy to be there. 1953 was my calories, closer to that 2000 mark that I want. Uh, I have actually a little more energy today. Uh, it feels good, uh, but I do feel my body. Like I said, in between that day, that day seven and 14, I know that I'm not gonna be uh, in the best of moods. My body's making that transition, so just be aware of your surroundings, be aware of your agitation rate and things of that nature. Continue to push forward, but identify why you might be a little more mm, annoyed by things this week, okay? So just be careful. Uh, 125 ounces, definitely got my water in. Uh, not quite the full uh, two, but I was the line above it, which is roughly around 15 ounces. Um, so about 125 ounces. Did get eight hours of sleep last night. Not quite, you know, roughly, um, you know, it, was, it wasn't quite eight. I think it was 10 minutes short or whatever, but I just put approximately eight. Uh, I did wake up once during the night, but it's normal when you're drinking as much water as I am. Got the eight hours, 65 minutes, I'm getting better. Uh, going through my workout. And as a matter of fact, uh, I went a little earlier yesterday, but there were still a lot of people. But I'm just trying to work around, you know, the amount of people that have gotten into the gym since the beginning of the year uh, to, to make sure I can work through it, but also getting used to the regimen, so it could be both those things. Last, 234 grams of protein. I love my protein. I still do believe that uh, protein helps you feel more full, especially when you add the water in there. Uh, and there's only four calories per gram. So, you know, that's really uh, 916, maybe 926. Check me on that one. But it's not that many calories when you got 2,000 to, to, to take. So uh, just so you know, uh, I'm happy with the protein. But when you take a look at this and we're seven days in, just remember the biggest thing is if you hit your calories, you should be getting your result as far as the weight's concerned. So the next thing we wanted to talk about was uh, the water. And some people are asking like, hey Richard, what do, you, what do you do for your water in the morning? Like how do you get it? And I guess they didn't specifically ask for the morning, but how am I getting my drinks? And, and I'll tell you, that's what I do in the morning. When I wake up, um, these are reusable waters, you know, the BPH uh, free bottles that I get at Kroger for $2.99 a dozen. But what I do is I have really good filtered water at my house. <laughs> so what I do is I just fill these two up uh, after I get done drinking them in the morning, but I drink them rather quickly. Not. I don't shotgun them or anything in the morning, but um, these are the two. So after I get done drinking these, it's roughly 34 ounces, you know, 33.8. Uh, it's a liter. So I get that done. And, you know, after you get 33 ounces and when my goal is 115, you don't have that far to go. So basically the next thing I have to drink is my 74 ounces, right? And we're at 107, 108 ounces. You know, I'm literally seven ounces away. So those two help me get to it really quickly. This is small for me. I get through that in a day. And then actually normally with supper or one of my meals, I have another bottle of water, but I like my uh, fizzy water. So I know it's a little bougie, but I do like fizzy water uh, with uh, the chicken and stuff that I eat just because I used to be, well, I am still, anytime I can get my hands on uh, Diet Mountain Dew, but um, I'm just trying to do away with those artificial sweeteners and things. So uh, 
you know, drinking that, that fizzy water. But one thing I want to let you guys know about the artificial sweeteners, that's why I paused a little bit, is I've had a headache uh, uh, lately, uh, a couple days, and I used to drink a ton of diet soda. Uh, not, not a ton, but, you know, drink one at least daily, maybe two uh, with my meals. As you cut your artificial sweeteners, uh, you know, people say you get ha caffeine headaches, and I have dropped a little bit on the caffeine, so it might be one of those two things, but you also may get a little bit of a headache from cutting out those artificial sweeteners, so be careful with that as well. That's a, that's a good thing to remember. But let's jump into the total body example. Now, I'm so bad, I have to go to a gym that I don't even have a weight here, so I'm gonna maybe demonstrate some of these with uh, the smart water, not very smart, but I mean, you know what? These have a little bit of weight in them, a little bit of resistance. If you don't have something at home, you can fill up water bottles if you don't have anything at home. But uh, when you're doing the full body, what I like is um, you can do dumbbells uh, or you can use uh, machines, right? And a lot of times with the, with the total body, Machines aren't bad. Um, I could go through and tell you what the machine exercises are if you want. Drop it in the comments and I can do this for you tomorrow uh, and just talk to you about what those machines would be called. But remember I said three sets of 10 uh, for each muscle group and basically that's what it is. So what I normally start with is I say start with your biggest muscle groups and move to your smallest because if you start with your smallest, uh, you won't have as much energy and you won't see as much progress with your larger muscle groups. And because your smaller muscle groups are used more frequently, uh, you can normally do more reps with them and adjust the weights easier without totally killing yourself uh, and, and having like potentially hurting yourself and things like that. Uh, so here we go. Legs, three times 10 dumbbell squat. So that's what the DB stands for, dumbbell. That is literally just taking dumbbells in both your hands and literally doing a squat, like you're doing an air squat. Hold them on the side of you. If you wanna focus on your quads or front of your legs, hold them in front of you. There's many different variations you could do. The nice thing are, is they're dumbbells and you don't have to start heavy. You know, I often say, start with air squats and see how that treats you for three sets of 10. If it's super, super easy, add weight slowly. So add five pound dumbbells, 10 pound dumbbells. You know, don't feel bad about doing it either. Trust me, you're gonna feel these if you haven't been doing squats in a while. Nest is chest and back. So your back is your second largest uh, muscle group, chest is your third. But the biggest thing is when you take a look at it, the legs are your biggest, obviously. You superset these. So with your chest, you wanna do, I just said three sets of 10 of a flat bell dumbbell press, right? So that's just laying down on your bench, making sure your back's not arched too much, keep a, keep a neutral spine, and you do your 10. But you do one set there, and then you hop over to your back or bent dumbbell row. So basically that's just over here, and make sure you keep your neutral spine again and pulling back. So rowing, I call them lawnmowers. You can do them one at a time too, but I like to do them both. Um, but definitely will work your latissimus dorsi. So that's a good one to do um, for a superset. Then I do shoulders by myself just because my shoulders are a little weaker. Um, so I, and I, and I like to focus on them a little more. Um, baseball player, you know, had have a few sh shoulder injuries. So I tend to go a little slower and make sure I'm, I'm really doing my form right so I don't have any further injuries. But for this, uh, if you have any trouble with your shoulders, you should probably stay uh, below like the plane. You shouldn't be going above head and above that kind of 90 degree right here. So make sure, and oh, I gotta do this disclaimer, I'm not a doctor, I'm not an exercise scientist, I'm nothing like that. Uh, I've just been doing this for a really long time and studying it for myself and, and a few of my buddies. And, and sometimes when people want to come along with me, I, I just studied this a long time. And, and um, so don't come above here if you have shoulder issues. And, and I still do overhead press. And I think I got a slap tear in my left uh, rotator cuff still, just won't get it fixed. But I've had my total right shoulder replaced and I try to do more um, below that plane uh, just to make sure my shoulders stay good. Uh, and I do those by myself, right? And I would say sitting lateral raise, that's just basically sitting there. And you don't wanna come all the way down to your legs and let it rest. You wanna keep a little little piece in there to where you get down and go here. But really, go slow on the concentric. I, I already go one, two, th three, four, and then I let it drop for four, right? And then I go up fast and I go down slow. So make sure you're doing that. Um, Sorry about the little bit of a gibberish that I just talked there. Uh, the next thing is biceps and triceps. So you wanna superset those. So what I have here is alternating dumbbell curls. That's just how it sounds. But I would say sit and do them um, because what you're gonna do after that is bent dumbbell kickbacks. That's basically bent. Make sure you keep that neutral spine. You can put your hand on something, but you just do exactly that, kickback and go for that horseshoe. But 
hopefully, and if you guys don't know what a horseshoe is, ask any one of the meatheads that you have in your gym, they'll show you their horseshoes. It's just basically the back of a really ripped tricep and it, it looks like the back of a horseshoe. Um, when you take a look at these things though, that's pretty simple as far as uh, you know, movement and things. If you even need uh, modified movements, uh, you know, do half half squats with that, or with your with your do chair sits if you have to with the squats. You know, in the chest and the back, everything. Do everything assisted. Uh, push ups on your knees. Like there's so many modifications you can do to these. Uh, just do your own research and go with what your body tells you. Your body doesn't lie. Now, there's a difference though. If you're a little sore, that's normal. Soreness is normal. So is it pain from soreness or is it true like injury pain? Be able to tell the difference. Most of us can. If you can't get into the doctor or, or do what you have to do to make sure. But what I've found is that I can let that soreness a lot of times be an excuse for me not to get back into the gym. So please don't do that as well. So anyway, I hope that was a good little rundown. I know I've taken a lot of time, but thank you so much for following. I definitely appreciate it. If you have any questions on this or if you have any questions on anything related to the calories or you know drinking the water, uh, just let me know. Drop a comment. We'll go from there. But thanks so much again for following. Thanks for your support. And I hope you guys have a good rest of your day.